Oh, hello everybody. We're back again. Today, we're gonna see if it's possible to do a hardcore Nuzlocke in Pokemon Diamond with no evolutions and poison types only. We're gonna have access to Badoo, Zubat, Ghastly, Stunky, and then Skaroopy or Krogonk because they both live in the Safari Zone. Also tentacle. The rules for this walkthrough are displayed right now. And just so you guys know, this is not a real hardcore Nuzlocke. It's just a playthrough where I push these challenges to the limit and see what's actually possible. All right, let's get right into it. I just chose Chimchar because I think Empoleon would be the hardest for my rival to have. And then I have access to my Badoo and my Zubat right before the Orberg Gym. For Rourke, I set up one growth on the first turn with Badoo. Then I can outspeed and kill all of his Pokemon in one hit with Mega Drain. For Mars, this Zubat can't do much to my Badoo. This means I can set up to plus six special attack with growth after I can kill the Zubat. Badoo is all the way at level 21 now because Perugly has fake out and outspeeds Badoo. I need enough health to survive this potential scenario. If Badoo survives, it only takes one Mega Drain to finish off the Perugly. Now for Gardenia. I can sweep her entire team with max attack max speed Zubat with a sky plate to power up its flying type moves. Since Zubat quad resists all of Gardenia's grass type moves, he's super safe here and can carry this entire gym battle for you. I'm gonna grab my Ghastly before I take on Jupiter just cause I can. Now for Jupiter, max attack, max speed, Zubat edge towards the level cap with a sky plate can kill the other Zubat in one hit at level 28. When stun tank comes out, it almost always tries to smoke screen or screech your Pokemon before it starts attacking. If it does attack, Zubat can only take one non crit night slash and thanks to sky plate, stun tank will always be a two hit KO from Zubat. I can now get my Stunky, and I'm gonna go all the way down to Pastoria to get Skaroopy before I fight Maylane. And I chose Skaroopy over Krogunk because you guys will see throughout this run, Skaroopy is a god. Alright, for Maylane, we're gonna sweep with Skaroopy. Max Attack, Max Speed Skaroopy can set up one Sword Stance on the Metatite and tank even a crit confusion from Metatite if it decides to go for it. Now I can outspeed and kill both Metatite and Machoke with a Sky Plate boosted Aerial Ace. Lucario in the back gets outsped too and taken out by one dig. All right, now for Wake. Okay, max special attack, max speed, Ghastly can outspeed and kill Gyarados and the Floatzel with one Thunderbolt. Quagsire has no attacking moves that can hit Ghastly, so I can finish that with two Shadow Balls. Okay, for Fantina, we're gonna start with Ghastly. In Choice Specs, Ghastly can outspeed and always kill Driftblim and Miss Magius with Shadow Ball. Then Gengar comes in. This Gengar can outspeed and kill Ghastly in one hit. It's also got Confuse Ray. So, to deal with this Gengar 100% safely, I'm gonna go into Skaroopy first, who has naturally high defense and can't be crit by Gengar because of the battle armor ability. The goal is just to rest up on Skaroopy until Gengar uses Confuse Ray. Once Skaroopy is confused, that's gonna guarantee a free switching into Stunky where Gengar won't confuse it because Skaroopy was already confused. If Gengar decides to confuse Ray the next turn, Stunky has a Persim Berry, which would immediately cure it. Gengar is gonna die to one max attack Night Slash from Stunky. 
All right, we have access to my final encounter, a tentacle. And I have to take on Barry before the Cantilave Gym. I'm gonna take out his first Staravia with a Choice Specs Thunderbolt from Ghastly, and then Heracross comes out. And now you guys finally will see the power of Skaroopy. Max defense, max HP Skaroopy completely walls this Heracross, and it can't get crit again because of the battle armor. Now, with Skaroopy, I can use Acupressure, and Acupressure is going to sharply raise a random one of my stats. That means I have to use it 21 times to ensure that I get every stat in the game. I can stay healthy with rest, and then, when I'm all set up, Barry's team will disappear to aerial aces and digs from Skaroopy. Okay, now for Byron. I'm gonna start with Stunky, and now Stunky has special attack instead of attack. Stunky can outspeed and two hit KO Bronzor with Flamethrower. It has a Lumbear just in case to deal with either Hypnosis or Confuse Ray from Bronzor. Now Steelix comes in. I'm gonna go directly into Max Special Attack Tentacle, who also has a Lumbear for the potential paralysis from Dragon Breath or the potential freeze from an Ice Bang. I can outspeed the next turn with Tentacool and kill it with a Surf. Now Bastiodon comes in, and since Tentacool has naturally high special defense, this Bastiodon does nothing to Tentacool with its special attacks. So we can 1v1 it, take it out, move on. I'm gonna sweep Candice with Skaroopy. Snover's Razor Leaf is quad resisted by Skaroopy. Avalanche does literally nothing to max defense, max HP Skaroopy. I don't care about Ingrain, and my stat changes outpace any of Snover's Leers, so I don't care about that either. This means that I can just sit here in front of Snover and set up all the way because I wall it completely. Once I'm completely set up with Skaroopy, I'm just going to sweep the rest of the team with Aerial Aces and Dig. Now this is the part of the game where the difficulty is going to spike and things are going to get really scary. For Mars and Jupiter though, I'm just going to use Stunky who's overall pretty resistant and good for this fight. I'm just going to substitute and protect the entire time with leftovers and let Barry's Pokemon do the majority of the work for this. Time for Cyrus. He's going to start with Honchkrow, and this Honchkrow seems to like to use any of its moves equally no matter the effectiveness versus my Stunky. I'm going to alternate here between Substitute and Protect until Honchkrow goes for either Embargo or Dark Pulse into Stunky's Substitute. Embargo is immune to Substitute and Dark Pulse doesn't do enough damage to break my Substitute since Stunky is max HP and max special defense. It also has leftovers too to maximize the amount of turns I can spam Substitute and Protect. Whenever Haunch uses either of these two moves, I have a chance next to lower its accuracy with Smokescreen. Now, Honchkrow might miss some of its moves into Stunky's Substitute and give me yet another turn to lower its accuracy with Smokescreen. This whole entire process snowballs very fast and very easily. Now, once Honchkrow is at minus 6, this is the turn that could make or break your run. I need to get Ghastly in the battle. I need Ghastly to either dodge an attack from Honchkrow since it's at minus 6 accuracy or hope it goes for Embargo on Ghastly which won't do any damage. Alright, Ghastly is safely in the battle. I'm also going to alternate between Substitute and Protect on Ghastly and it has leftovers too so I can spam these for a while. Whenever Honchkrow misses either a Dark Pulse or a Drill Pack, into my Ghastly Substitute, 
I'm gonna spite the next turn and decrease the PP of either Dark Pulse or Drill Pack by four. I will never spite after an Embargo or a Steel Wing because I want Honchkrow to be left with those two moves in the end. However, this section of the battle won't always work out how I want it to. Honchkrow goes for a random move every turn, so sometimes you could get super unlucky and it'll spam steel wings and embargoes and waste all my protects and substitutes before I get the spites off that I need. Honchkrow still has a couple moves left at this point, but I have no choice. I have to go into Skurupi now since Ghastly is not safe without any substitutes or protects left. Max D, max HP Skurupi with leftovers will tank only one drill pack at a time. And remember, it can't die to one drill pack because it can't get crit. I'll just have to hope Hodge keeps missing any of the remaining drill packs it has left and rest off any damage from the hits. Once it only has Steel Wing and Embargo left, I'm 100% safe. At the same time, I need to set up 21 acupressures to guarantee I have all the stats I need to sweep. Through testing, Crobat sometimes comes in before I'm all set up, but I'm usually pretty safe because I have plenty of relevant boosts to wall Crobat at this point anyway. Skurupi is now set up and can spam Aerial Ace until Cyrus' team is gone. Oh, you guys want me to sweep Volkner with Badoo? Okay, I'll do it. Badoo is going to make an appearance after being away for quite a while. This Badoo is max defense and max speed with leftovers. I don't want my Badoo paralyzed by Raichu's Thunder Wave, so I'll always keep my sub up to be immune to it. Since I have max defense, Raichu's Brick Break won't break my substitute. Charge Beam won't break it either, but if Raichu gets special attack boost from it, it can potentially break it, but I don't really care about it that much since I can stay healthy regardless. Now, since I wall this Raichu pretty well, I can set up the plus 6 special attack with Growth. I'll only finish Raichu off if the light screen is gone. I'd rather have a sub up, but Ambipom comes out after, and it can't touch Badoo, so I can always set up a substitute on Ambipom if I don't get it up versus Raichu. I can use Giga Drain to kill all of Volkner's Pokemon. I only need the substitute up at the end because Giga Drain is a two hit KO on Luxray, which means I'm gonna have to live one attack from Luxray. I'm dead to a potential crit from Crunch. That's why I have the substitute up. But let's give a round of applause to Badoo. For the final fight against Barry, I'm going to start with Choice Specs Ghastly, who can kill the Star Raptor and the Empoleon that comes after with Choice Specs Thunderbolt. When Roserade comes in, I'm just going to go into Stunky that resists everything Roserade has, and now I can alternate between Substitute and Protect to stay safe and eventually get Roserade's accuracy to minus 6 with Smokescreen. Once Roserade is at minus 6 accuracy, I'll switch into Skaroopy and do a Skaroopy sweep. Thanks Skaroopy. Let's move on to the Elite Four. These are all the boys before we go into the Elite Four. Everyone's EV trained and throughout this run, you do have access to EV reducing berries, so I was able to change the EVs if I needed to. But before the Elite Four, you can't edit your EVs. You could do that actually in black and white too because of your wings that you could just bring into the Elite Four and EV your Pokemon in between battles, but not in this game. What we go in with here is what we got. And Zubat? Zubat's not required for the Elite Four. He's just there for fun. All right, let's go. All right, for Aaron, this Dustox can't touch Skaroopy. Toxic doesn't affect me, 
Bug Buzz does nothing because it's resisted and Dust Dock special attack sucks, Light Screen is useless, and my Aerial Aces in the end are just going to go through Dust Dock's double teams anyway. I can set up all the way with Acupressure on it and take out all the bugs. And you're going to see this for all of the Elite Four and the Champion. CP Poople is methed out. Yeah, it's happening again for Bertha. Quagsire's dig does nothing to max defense, max HP, Skaroopy. I can heal off any sandstorm damage too with leftovers. My aerial ace is gonna go through his double team, and I can just occupy pressure during his protects. Oh my god, CP Poople is just gonna tear through Bertha's team again. No way it's gonna happen again though. Okay, Flint is going to be slightly different. I'm going to start with my max special attack, max speed tentacle with choice specs. I can outspeed the Rapidash and kill it with Surf. Then, Low Pony comes in. I'm going to go into Stunky and just attempt to get as many smoke screens off as I can without risking my Stunky to a crit from Low Pony's Fire Punch. Oh, wait. CP Poople is back again, and he's using Occupressure. No. CP Poople, stop. Stop it, CP Poople. Ah, <sighs> I guess he's just gonna sweep another team. Hopefully, CP Poople won't do it again, though. I'm so sorry about that, guys. This time I won't do it. For Lucian, I'm gonna start with Badoo. Badoo is max special defense and max HP, and can tank Mr. Bime's Thunderbolt without breaking the substitute that it sets up. When Mr. Mime uses Psychic, I'll always either have a substitute or be using Protect, so I'll always be safe. Mr. Mime alternates between Thunderbolt and Psychic, even though Psychic is way more effective on Badoo. With Leftovers, Substitute, and Protect on Badoo, I'll always stay ahead of Mr. Mime and be able to stall it out until it only has Light Screen and Reflect left. Okay, now it's stalled out. Oh, oh, I'm so sorry, guys. CB Poople is back and he's using Acupressure again. Yeah, okay, I'm sorry. But, okay, for the champion, I won't do this again. Don't worry, okay? I'll find a different strategy. Cynthia is going to be pretty simple. My strategy is a little overkill, but I can drop any Pokemon I want since it's the last battle. I'm going to start with Focus Sash Ghastly, and I'll get Spiritomb's special attack to minus 6 with Captivate. Once Spiritomb murders my Ghastly, I'll go into Stunky, who can set up a sub and since Spiritomb's at minus 6 special attack, I can tank anything and my sub will never break. This way, I can get Spirit Tomb to minus 6 accuracy with Smoke Screen. Once it's at minus 6, oh, sorry, I tricked you guys. CP Poople is back. He's going to set up 21 Acupressures, and we're going to sweep Cynthia's entire team. Oh, CP Poople, thank you so much. CP Poople is gonna have to go down as one of the best MVPs I've ever had for any of these runs. I don't think anyone will ever compare to CP Poople. Alright guys, with that done, I can finally say that poison types with no evolutions and hardcore Nuzlocke rules, definitely possible in this game. Cyrus could be a bit of a roadblock, but it's not that big of a deal. You need to get your battle armor, Skaroopy. Just reset the run if you don't. Well, I had a lot of fun making this, and Skaroopy is so good at Pokemon. So, we'll do something different next time. I'll see you guys in the next episode, but... Don't forget to subscribe, click the like button, leave a notification bell, drop a comment, drop a like, smash the subscribe button, and always ring the notification. I'll see you next time.